We invite you to our services at 12 noon or live at 1205 at slugaroo.com. We also have Breaking Bread Bible Study every other Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Oh, yeah, my God, my God, my God, my God. Praise God, praise God. Everybody, we'll get this outreach international. Those tune in on the Slug TV Network. God bless you. God bless you. Glory to God. This is the second Sunday of 2018. Woo! Amen. Let's give it up. The second Sunday of 2018. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that. Amen. We are in the new year. If you guys haven't noticed already. Amen. Some of us need to get new calendars. I know I do. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. I need to get a new calendar for my desk. Amen. So I can get uh, 2018 rocking. Amen. Rolling. Amen. Yes. Rock it and roll. I pray you all had a blessed week. Yes, God. Amen. Pray you all had a blessed week. I pray you all had a warm week. Amen. Because we know it's kind of frigid out there. Amen. But I pray you guys had a warm week as well. Amen. And I'm glad the weather kind of missed us a little bit. Uh -huh. Yes, Lord. Amen. So we can get to where we need to be. Amen. amen. So we hickles. Amen. So we thank God. But I got a quick little uh, note that I want to put down here before we go into part two of the kingdom stewardship. In my personal devotion, glory to God, I was really thanking God that this blessed my heart. Amen. Uh, this is a great scripture. I talked about it before. Uh, Jeremiah 3 and 15. But Amen. What broke out to me was in the commentary section uh, of this particular scripture that really blessed my life. And it will bless those who uh, are listening to what I'm saying right now. Glory to God. It really shines light on the importance of a shepherd. It really shines light on the importance of of a shepherd after God's own heart. A lot of uh -huh. people think they don't need nobody who, to lead them and guide them in life. Right? Yes. Right. Glory right. to God. A lot of people think they can do it on their own, but I come to they serve. Can. Everybody notice that you need somebody That's to right. lead That's you right. where you're at. That's is. right. You need somebody uh, with uh, uh, some knowledge and understanding uh -huh. of something to lead you. And this commentary yes. really blessed my life. Yes, I'm going to read the scripture first, and then we're going to read it out of the Gills Exposition of the Bible. And it really blessed me. It says, Jeremiah 3 and 15, and I will give you pastors uh -huh. according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Glory yes, to God. Lord. Some of us try to block out the stuff that we really need. My yes, God. yes. Some of us try to say, no, I don't need that right now. All right. I want to do it my way. Yes. Amen. Amen. But I want to read this, what it says. It says this, and I will give you pastors according to my heart. Which is to be understood not of political rulers and governors, but ministers of the word, who are pastors or shepherds under Christ, the great shepherd, uh -huh. and are gifts. And it has gifts in parentheses, meaning yes. we are gifts unto men, glory to God. Yes. We are gifts, and it says, of his churches, according to his heart, Amen. and conformable to his mind. So the stuff that pastors preach, uh -huh. glory to God, it's according to God's mind. Amen. Right? So it's according to his God's mind. Yes. And it says in an Arabic version, whom he calls, uh -huh. he qualifies, That's right. and puts into ministry, and sends forth. Yes. Whom he holds in his right hand, uh -huh. and keeps as the apple of his eye. Yes. Who do his will. Oh yes. God. So pastors, we don't really just do our will. Amen. All right. We do his will. Yes. As the target, it says, feed men according to his heart. Amen. So when we come up here every Sunday, we feed you to what the Lord yes. wants yes. you and I to eat. Yes. Yes. Oh Thank God. you, Lord. After his own heart, according to his heart, as the prophecies belong to gospel times. Amen. As appears both by what goes before and by what follows. The apostles of Christ and the first ministers of the gospel are chiefly designed Though it might have uh, some accomplishment in Nehemiah and Ezra, Zechariah, Malachi, those are people in the Bible, amen. Amen. Then it says, we shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Everybody say knowledge and understanding. Knowledge and understanding. With things worthy to be known and understood. Yes. With the solid and substantial truths of the gospel. Yes. And by faithfully administering the ordinances of it. So we are faithfully administering the ordinance of what Amen. we are teaching, Amen. teaching it, y'all. Amen. 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 Yes. Well, Amen. Because it's what God has given us from That's this right. Time. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He bless me. Thank Glory you, Jesus. God. And then it goes on and says this, but according to the laws of Christ, uh -huh. these words, the knowledge and understanding may either intend the matter with which these pastors should feed the church. Yes. We're supposed to feed the sheep. Amen. That's right. Feed the church. Yes. Feed the sheep. Listen, yes. we don't want y'all to be so malnutritioned that That's you right. can't live on your own. Come on now. You have to eat the word so much of what's coming from over here that you Come can on. partake. Glory to God. When you're not in the presence. Uh huh. Jesus. Jesus. And then it goes on and says this. Uh, understanding 
which they intend for spiritual knowledge and understanding and increase thereof, and which is blessed of God to such a purpose. Though themselves cannot give it. So what we coming up here, we can't give you this ourselves. Amen. Glory to God. We we up here giving you the word of God and we can't give we can't make this stuff up. Glory to God. We gotta give you what God gives us. Yes, Lord. To give to you all as yes. you can see the apple of this eye yes. of his will. This has blessed my whole life. Amen. Uh, the importance of a shepherd. My yes. God. And it says this for this purpose, they Cannot give it themselves. Or uh -huh. else the manner in which they feed or rule that is wisely and prudently. Yes, God. They feed wisely and prudently when they rightly divide the word of truth. So every time Amen. we come up here, we're rightly dividing the word of truth so we can break it down. Listen, yes, so yes. So we can break it down so we can really regurgitate it. Yes. Know what's going on. It says, and we're give we're to down. everyone their portion of meat in due season uh -huh. and feed them in a proportion to their age and capacity yes give milk to babes and meat to the strong men uh-huh so that's what we give bits and pieces to the babies but give y'all who adults some real word amen amen give you some real word but we mix it up to where you can have a little bit of pieces and a big piece come on now glory to god this says and they rule with wisdom and prudence when they govern according to the laws of Christ. Amen. And take care that they put in execution. Yes. And do all the things decently and in order. Yes. As David feed the flock according yes, to the Lord. integrity of their hearts. And guide them by the skillfulness of their hands. Psalms 78 and 72. That just bless Amen. me. Because it is so important that we have a shepherd in our life. Yes, Lord. It is so important that we have a shepherd in our life. Not only a shepherd, but a pastor of God's own heart. Amen. Who's going to give us what is on God's heart. My God, my God, especially in these last and evil days. Amen. We need someone who will give us the real deal, who will break it down, who will tell us the truth. Glory to God. Without sugar, cold, glory to God. So we can get to where we need to be in our life. Because listen, I don't want none of us to self-destruct. I don't want none of us to accept the struggle. I don't want none of us to throw in the towel, my Amen. God. Some of us may be sick of it right now. Don't throw in the towel. Amen. My God, don't throw in the towel. Keep it going. But I also want to give meat to those who ain't giving up. Yes. Those who are ready to go to the other side. Those yes. who are ready to go a little bit further. Amen. Amen. Yes, my God. God. My God. All right, we're going to go into what we're talking about. That's just something that has blessed me. I was talking about we are gifts, glory to God. Amen. And we need a gift. Yes. A shepherd, someone to lead and guide me yes, to where sir. I need to be. Amen. Lead Amen. and guide me to where I need to be. Some of us may be in that place right now. We need to be leading in God. Amen. Glory to God. We need to be leading in God. We need to be on the, the right way. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. All yes, right, all right. Let's get it in. Let's get it in. But that just really blessed me because sometimes we got to have some knowledge. Some understanding. Yes. What would they got? Something that's going to bring us from one point to the next point. Yes. My God, don't get stuck in your transition. Amen. Wow. <laughs> don't get stuck in your transition. <laughs> don't get stuck in your transition. Stuff will try to uh, slow you down. Glory to God. Don't get stuck in your transition. Okay, we're going to do part two of Kingdom Stewardship. We're going to speed this up so I can get done with this today. Amen. So, uh, last week we talked about King of Stewardship. We talked about money. Amen. We talked about dinero. Yeah. We talked about pesos. Yeah. We talked about them M's. Them yeah. M's. Amen. I need them M's. Yeah. Glory to God. So, we talked about money. But it's not just money That's uh, right. that way. We want money the kingdom way. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. So, once we have money the kingdom way, money will not get us sidetracked. Uh-huh. Glory to God. Money will not get us sidetracked. Yes. And then money won't have our hearts. Yes. Amen. Amen. We know our scripture reading for uh, Romans 12 and 2. It says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Amen. So this year, we said last week, the Lord is going to do brain surgery on our minds. Yes. And transform our minds with the renewal of the minds. And we're going to go where we need to go Amen. in 2018. Because listen yes. to this. I'm sick of being broke. Amen. 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 I'm sick of being broke. So how can I get out of the broke status, Pastor? Glory to God. Listen. That's right. Apply the word of God. Uh -huh. Do something different. Yeah. Glory to God. You know how you save enough for something that you really like? Yeah. Glory to God. You do whatever it takes to get what you really want. Yes. Oh my God. You do whatever it takes to get what you really want. Yes. You will stop everything. Amen. For that thing you want. Amen. You know what? I'm getting that. 
Uh -huh. I ain't going to eat for 52 days. <laughs> Come on now. I'm walking to work. Mm -hmm. I ain't spending a dime because I'm getting that. Yes. Let's apply yes. that to the word of God. Amen. Let's apply that to the word of God. Amen. And, and the world got it so that we don't even like the word of God because it's not appealing, right? Come on. My God, it, ooh, it's not appealing uh -huh. to the world that built you. Come on. <laughs> Wow. When the world start to peel you like uh -huh. a onion, you really start to see that yes. the world ain't what it's cracked up to be. Yes. My God, then you run to the world. So when you run to the world, you get what you need. And you said, I needed this the whole time. Uh -huh. I needed this thing to sustain me the whole yes. time. But I've been in a world that puts the word on the back burner. Yes. And this is what blesses me as we go into this word. What changed this lady's life mm -hmm. was the word from the prophet. Amen. I represent your prophet, I represent your pastor, I represent your apostle, your evangelist, your teacher, your preacher, glory to God. Sometimes we just need a word. That's right. Glory to God. Hey, this is good. Sometimes the word may be no. Oh, come on. Oh, my God. Sometimes the word might be no. My God, that's what it is. Sometimes the word might be no. Even though we're looking for a yes, glory to God, sometimes a no can save your life. My God, sometimes a no can save your life. Sometimes a no can save your life. Sometimes the Lord is trying to get something to you, but it's wrapped up in a different package. Amen. It's wrapped up in a different package. Glory to God. So the Lord wants to do brain surgery on us so we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Glory to God. And I put this down. Last week it said this. Quiet has kept. Some people have mental issues that need to be dealt with by a counselor. Glory to God. Some of us may be kind of messed up, glory to God, but we need the counselor. Yes. And we talk about who that counselor is, the wonderful counselor, which Amen. is Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And, and it says this, uh, uh, mental illness can uh, range from mental health issues such as disorders that affect your, mu your mood, your thinking, and behavior. Yes, Lord. So when you're going through something, it messes with your mood, your uh -huh. thinking, and your behavior. Yes, you don't yes. want to do what you know what is right yes. because something messed up your mind. Amen. You don't want to do what it seems to be right because now you're thinking, oh, woe is me because your mind starts to waver. So you need somebody who to counsel you. And a counselor says a person trained to give guidance on personal, social, psychological problems. It says a mental illness includes depression, anxiety disorders, schizophrenia, eating disorders, and addictive behavior. So yes. the mind has to get changed. Listen, That's right. Because back in my day, when it wasn't going right for me, I would have got me a bottle of Hennessy. All right. All right. When it wasn't right for me, I would have got me some loud liquor. Yes. When it wasn't right for me, I wanted to feel right because it was looking wrong everywhere I went. Uh -huh. I needed something to get my mind off of my current situation. Come on now. And I thought that weed and that drink was the counselor. Yes. Until I threw up. Uh huh. I've been drinking. Yes. Yeah. I've been drinking. Drinking. And I got sick of drinking because you know sometimes when you get so messed up, you like, man, I ain't on it no more. Amen. So I had to find out who can speak to my mind when my mind is sober. Yes, who Lord. Can speak, Hallelujah. Who can speak to my mind when I'm sober? Because listen, when I start to partake in that, I get into a different mode. Listen, yes, Lord. But I need somebody who to speak to me when yes, I'm sober minded. Yes. I need a renewed mind. Everybody say a renewed mind. Renewed mind. When you have a renewed mind, you think differently. You think differently. Quiet as kept. People have mental issues and they need to be helped yes. by a counselor, yes. which is Jesus Christ. And Isaiah 9 and 6, it says, For unto us uh, a son is born and given to us, the government shall be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Glory to God. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince. Of peace. Some of us don't need the money. Some of us need peace. Some of us don't need yes. Yeah, some of us need no. Glory to God. Some of us don't need to move. Some of us need to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Because listen, if you get what you want prematurely, my yes. God, yes. you can self destruct. Amen. Mm. That's right. Sometimes God puts you in a place to hold you. Glory to God. So you can get prepared for where He's going to take you. Glory to God. So when you get there, it says you will be a tire lacking no thing. Yes. Let patience have a perfect work, but you ready to go. I'm ready. But God says, hold on just a little bit. Yes, Lord. 
like a hold on just a little bit. Yes, Lord. So what we talking about today? We're talking about money. Everybody say money. Money. Glory to God. Glory to God. Kingdom come. Kingdom come. The Lord gave me a, a, a reflection, glory to God, an acronym, uh -huh. glory to God, with that, and I learned how to just chop up these words. Yes. So in the first word, kingdom, we subtracted five letters from that. Uh -huh. We subtracted the K, the G, the D, O, and the M, uh -huh. and we left come. So kingdom come, we subtracted five letters, five is the number of grace, so God is going to give us the grace, glory to God, so we can have the grace to get God's dominion. Yes. He's going to give us the grace. So when we subtract those letters, it leaves the word income. Uh-huh. Kingdom come on your income. All right. Kingdom come yes. on your income. Yes, I need the kingdom come to yes, come into my income. Yes. I need the kingdom come to come into my yes, income. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes, so what Lord. is income? Income is money that is earned from work, investments, and business. Uh huh. Glory to God. Work, investments, or businesses. We yes. don't know about the other two because we haven't been taught those other two. Amen. Those other two, we have to read. Glory to God. Yes. He says reading is fundamental, but we black folk, we don't like reading. Come on now. They say that big thing. Amen. If you want somebody uh, not to learn, put it in a book. Oh my God. That's yes. what they say. It's like the Black History Month. Uh -huh. That's yes, what they Lord. tell us. But leaders are readers. Yes. Leaders are readers. If you don't hear me say nothing else, read a book. Amen. Leaders are readers. I learn so much by reading a book because they always say, if you put it in the book, black people would not read it. Uh-huh. That's what they say. Leaders are readers. If you haven't read a book, go get mine. So come back, fight back with faith. I'm fightwithmyfaith.com. <laughs> Glory to God, glory to God. So we got to make sure that we start to read some things and learn some things. And don't be, a, listen, don't be afraid to ask if you don't know. Don't be afraid to ask if you don't know. And if I don't know, I'm going to just tell you, I don't know. Glory to God. So, so that's where God's grace is. He allows the kingdom to come into our money. Know God's dominion. Many try to keep God out their money, but pray for him to move on their money. Uh-huh. No, I don't want God in my business. I don't want God in my bank account. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I ain't got time for that. But I need to pray for money. Come on now. But he's doing brain surgery on us, so we're not even thinking like that. Yes. Let's think like Pastor Ruth. Glory to God. He don't pray for money. He speak to money. That's right. Glory to God. He speak to money. Amen. To so, so we need God's grace to help us to get from one place to the next. Amen. Many try to keep God out of their money, but pray for him to move on their money. Yes. I put this down. If he can heal your body, he can heal your money. That's right. That's if right. He can heal your body, he can heal your money. Yes. Amen. We pray for everything else. Lord, save my son. Lord, give me a job. Lord, God, heal my body. Lord, heal my finances. But you need a new mind, though. Because it's working, investments, and businesses. Listen, if you got an investment, you can't think the same way you did before. Because I put this on uh, Saturday. I came to work. I said, scared money don't make no money. And it takes money to make money. So if you don't want to invest in yourself, oh, this is good. If you don't want to invest in yourself, how can you expect a return? If you don't want to sow seed, how can you expect harvest? If you don't want to get in where you fit in, how are you going to break out of what you in? Come on, that's good. So you got to break the mindset of what you grew up in. Poverty, that's a mindset. Lack, that's a mindset. Glory to God. Thinking that you can't get enough is a mindset, so it has to break. Listen, it has to break because you broke anyway. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Jesus. I it has to break because you broke anyway. All right, all right. It has to break so you broke anyway. So why can't we stay broken vessels? Oh, listen to this. We have to be broken so we can be used. God uses broken vessels. Come on when now. When the vessel is broken, it'll make sure it's not on the edge no more. Oh, yeah. oh Jesus. It'll make sure don't put that on the edge no more. Yeah. So don't live on the edge no more. Yeah. Right. So don't spend all your money no more. Uh -huh. Glory to God. Glory, Lord. Glory. If he can heal your body, he can heal your money. Yes, he can. So, as the scripture says, the lady who had all those debts, she was told by the prophet of God to fill her jar with oil uh -huh. and sell it. Yes. 
We need a word from God. How can I come up? What you got in your house? Right. Come on. We talked about last Sunday. Glory God. The oil represents the anointing. Yes. What do you have in your house? Yes. What do you have of value that you can sell and make money? Yes. Some of us sitting on a gold mine. Sell some stuff you got at home. <laughs> you got a hundred pairs of shoes. Sell 50. Amen. Make some money. Amen. Make some investments. Amen. My God, you got glory to God. Whatever you got extra of, flip it. Yes. yes. Go on eBay. Amen. Amazon. I gave you a tip right there. Amen. <laughs> so he asked her in 2 Kings 4, 1 through 7, it says, Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the son, who was the prophets unto Elijah, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou was thy servant, did fear the king. I fear the Lord, excuse me. And the creditor, creditors are come to take him and my two sons to be bound, bound men. Now back in the day, if you didn't pay your debts, they came to get you. That's yeah. right. Yeah. It ain't no, oh, I'm going to die. Jim. No, they're coming to your house. Uh -huh. <laughs> Glory to God. Yes. Then it says this. And Elijah said unto her, what shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in thy house? And she said, thine hand may have nothing uh, but a, save a pot of oil. Then he said, go and borrow vessels abroad to all our neighbors. Empty the vessels and brought out a few. So she went to the, her neighbors and asked them, do y'all got a jar? Do you got a pickle jar? Do you got a bucket? Do you got a mayonnaise jar? Whatever you got, I need it right now. Amen. You get desperate when a man of God tells you to do something. Yes. My God, the Lord said fast, he mean fast. All Lord right. God. The Lord said, put your money up. He said, put your money up. My uh -huh. God, you got to do whatever you got to do. You got to ding dong, knock on the door. Hey, do you got anything? I'll put this oil in. Amen. Don't borrow just a few. And when she went out, she went out and she came up in the house. She pulled up under there. She went sit for him after she had everything filled up. And then she ran out of a jar. It filled up. And he, she asked him, what to do now? You got to get a word from the man of God and then go back to him and ask him what to do next. Uh huh. We're just getting a word and doing it and don't know what else to do. Come on now. My yes. God, my God. So what she's doing, she is listening to every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the prophet. Yes. It says man should not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen. So she uh she sat there and she's brought all the vessels and then she came to him and told the man he said go and sell the oil and pay thy debt and thou live off the rest. Mm. Mm. My God and thou live off the rest. So basically debt is something that confuses you from your rest. Amen. Amen. Debt confuses you from your rest. Yes. You looking at the debt and you forgetting about the rest. My God. Come on now. You looking at the debt and you forgetting about the rest. Yes. Debt confuses you yes. of your rest. And we can think about rest as left over, but we can think about rest as we're resting. In Come God. on now. Come on. We're not worrying about Come our debts. My God. Yes. Because we pay it all. Yes. Yes. So I'm resting. Yes, Lord. So when you don't pay your debts now, you're running, you're panicking, you don't want to answer the phone, you ain't even me you no more. Come on now. May I speak to Pastor Williams? This is not he. <laughs> me speak no English. <laughs> Wrong number. You don't even want to be yourself. That's right. <laughs> so so this is what I, I've, I've been very cognizant lately of the people who may be in different things in their life. Life may be upside down, different have uh, different levels of difficulty. I know this, glory to God. But this is the key. It says Jesus can move that mountain. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Jesus can move that. No matter what you did, God can move that. Yes, he can. Because he, 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 he removed the sin. Yes. He removed everything that's blocking us from going where we're headed. That mountain that we have made, he can move it. Yes, Lord. So don't be guilty of the mountain you made. Amen. Ooh. Thank you, Lord. Ooh. Because you weren't guilty when you made it. Oh. Come on now. Woo. That's good. Don't be guilty of the amount you made. Because when you made it, you weren't guilty then. Oh. Come on now. Then he says this in the word. When they brought the woman who had adultery. Who sinned cast the first stone. Listen. So it's not just you who messed up. Come on. So we can't be mad because you messed up. That's right. Up. Confess it to the Lord. Uh -huh. So you can change your situation. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. We're talking about money today. Yes. Glory to God. And it says, this is about moving mountains, Mark 11 and 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever will say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he saith. 
Uh huh. So you saying if I speak it out and right. don't doubt, I can have it? Yes. yes. So you saying I can come out of debt if I speak my word out? Yes. So you saying I can have more than enough if I say it? Yes. Well, why ain't I saying it? Come on now. Yeah. Faith without works is dead. I'm, yes. I'm debt free. But if I don't work it, uh -huh. my God, it's just going to be debt free and not debt free on me. Oh, Come on now. I speak it on myself. So we got to get it in. All right, I'm going to hurry up and get it in because I know my time is low. Glory to God. But I'm going to finish this today. Say, finish it, Pastor. Finish it, Pastor. I am. <laughs> then it goes on and says this. Uh, Mark 11 and 22, it says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. That's what he said. Have faith in God. Don't have faith in your job. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Don't have faith in man. Glory to God. Don't have faith in those businesses or those investments. Yes. Have faith in God because he's the one that's going to move every mountain out your way. That's right. My God. Yes, Lord. Boss out your way. My God. Yes. Move that employee out your yes. way. He's going to move everything out your way as you profess. Amen. Those things that Amen. Come out your way. Amen. So he can give you rest. My God, don't y'all want to be in the rest of God? Yes. My God, and you can live off your rest and enjoy. Listen, what's going on? He's messing our mind up so we can't enjoy our come up. Come on. Yeah. My God. That's good. It says, in everything we do, we must have faith. That's since, right. Since, since we're talking about kingdom stewardship and financial literacy, let's have faith in God to move on our finances. Uh huh. Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. Move on our finances. So uh, I put this down: reconstruction. All right. Financial reconstruction, and reconstruction is the process of building something that was damaged or destroyed again. Some of our finances may be messed up as we came into 2018, but that's okay because it's time for reconstruction. Yes. Financial reconstruction. 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 They say you say something 13 times, you will remember. Amen. You say it so many times you remember. It don't matter what it is. So now when you go home, financial reconstruction yes. is in my brain. Yes. yes. I heard it so many times. Financial reconstruction. So that means 2018, I'm going to reconstruct my finances. Yes. Glory to God. So as we do that, our heart begins to turn. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Like anything else, it begins in your heart. If yes, your God. heart is messed up, uh -huh. it will be very difficult to try new things because your memory of your past yes, still Lord. affects Hallelujah. your heart. Yes, Lord. Uh. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Like anything else, it begins in your heart and it will mess you up because it's very difficult to try new things because the memory of the past still affects your heart. Some Amen. people don't talk about money in the church because the church did wrong with your money. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. That's right. It's taboo to talk about money in church because the pastor did something wrong with your money. Yes. So what you need is a pastor after God's own heart. That's it. So what you need is somebody who will yes. lead you and guide you the way that they went yes. so now all y'all can have that rest. Yes. Yes. I want the anointing to flow from the head on down. Yes, Lord. Listen. When you have rest, you don't have stress. Come on. Because you're too right. blessed to be stressed because yes. you're in your that, rest. Yes. And you ain't got no debts. Yes. yes. Come on. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. It's the truth. Yes, Lord. I want y'all blessed. Amen. Glory to God. So it begins with your heart. Yes, God. So as kingdom folk, we must thank God for our new hearts. Yes, Which Lord. means we have a new mind. Yes. And we can begin to do new things. Yes. We have a new mind. So now let me recalibrate the way that I use my money. Uh -huh. We talk about if I have $100, don't spend 90 and expect to be blessed. Yes. Oh. I got 100 I got $90. i am am I'm on. I'm going to just say this to you. I get paid next week. Uh -huh. No. You don't think like that. Yes. We got to get a new mind. Yes. I got to be conscious. I got to be a good steward. Yes. So kingdom stewardship gets us to a place of being a good steward of what we get from our work, 
our business and our investments. Amen. I know this is big talking, but if you don't talk about money, we're going to still go do the same thing every right. day. That's right. I want to right. be blessed. Yeah, I want everybody right. around me. Listen, yes, so if everybody around me blessed, you ain't going to hate on what I got. Amen. Oh, yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, Hello, whites. Yes. <laughs> My God. Listen, you got to do what I did to get what I got. Amen. You got to sow what I sold to yes. get. What I got. Yes. Yes. You can't get what I got because I paid a price for it. All right. Yes, God. The price of your oil goes up. Listen, yes. when the price of your oil goes up, then you can sell your oil. <laughs> Come on now. Come on. When the price of your oil goes up, good. then you can sell your oil. Yes. Now your oil could be gifts, it could be talents, it could be things, and it's in your life yes. that you can begin to sell it. Amen. Going back to stewardship, when he gave them talents, he says, when I come back, you should multiply that. That's right. That's Don't right. just bury that one talent. That's right. Use them. Use them. Use them. My God, whatever God gave me, I use it and I sell it. Is that true? Amen. Yes. CDs, sell them. Books, sell them. T-shirts, sell them. Your oil. You didn't go through all that hell in your life not to let people know what God did in your life. Entrepreneurship. Investments. Listen, because it keeps the seed going. It keeps the seed going. Businesses. Glory to God. Even if you don't got a business, Lord God, take care of your own business. Hey, did you know that you are a business? <laughs> don't let people fool you just because you ain't got no store. Don't think you're not a business. Amen. You are a business. Yes. And you got some business. Yes. Your life is a business. Yes. Glory to God. Your social security card and number is a business. Yes, it is. When they're looking at your financials, they what? Looking at your business. Yes. yes. Let's get our business in order. Yes, God. We're talking about money. Yes. I want you to be blessed because you are all your own personal CEOs. Uh huh. Whatever you do, with, listen, your, your, your business will go down when your money goes down. Yes, that's right. That's true. My God, my God. That's true. Let this bless you. That's true. So as kingdom folk, we must thank God for our new hearts, which means now we have a new mind and we begin to do new things. Today we're talking about money. Everybody say money. Money. Time to do new things with our money. Our need, money needs to increase uh -huh. so we can do more for the kingdom. Amen. Today we're talking about money. And our money needs to increase so we can do more for the kingdom. Yes, Lord. Today we're talking about money. <laughs> a, a broken record. Today we're talking about money. And our money needs to do more for the kingdom. Amen. You see my head? Today we're talking about money. And today, so what he's saying is now once we change the aspect of our money and what we enter into agreement with God, now we're doing different things for God. Listen, if he can heal my body, that means I can't eat what I used to. Come on now. If he fixed me, now I can't do what broke me down before. My Amen. Because now my mind changed and now I have regulations. Yes. My God. Now I have standards. Now I have things that I can't do out of the perimeters of me getting to where I need to be. Yes, Lord. I want to be financially whole. I want to be physically whole. Yes, I want to be in a place where I'm into rest. Yes, yes. So ways to increase our money. Spend less. Amen. Amen. You can write that down. Yeah. Spend less. Ways to increase my money. Spend less. Number two. Decrease debt. Decrease debt. And a good one, sow into the kingdom. Amen. I'm a pastor. <laughs> sow into the kingdom. We heard about uh, Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, and Bill Gates. They said they give up 10% of their millions and billions because they know the power in giving. My God, know the power in giving. Spend less, decrease debt, and sow into the kingdom. Because as a shepherd under God's own heart, listen, Church just don't get money out the sky. Come on. Yeah. We don't say we want to be mega pastors and mega churches. Lord, send in the money. And money falls down from the bread of heaven. No, it don't work like that. We all go to work. Yeah. And we all get money. Let's yeah. sow it to the kingdom. Amen. But the key is we need to be taught what to do with our money and how to sow. Amen. 
How to sow. Okay, Lord, you gave me all of this. What am I supposed to do with it? Yes. Think about it. You so get a flat check. Ooh, we are on. I'm about to get that. What if, what if, what if, what if God say, give do something all. different this time? Give it all. Can you obey God or obey your flesh? Come on now. So this is where the heart issue comes in because some of us love money than God. It says, Amen. Uh, you can't serve two masters. Yes. Either you're going to love one or hate the other. You can't serve God and money. That's right. That's as right. I'm your pastor, as I'm leading you, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Do what I do so what's on me can be on you. Amen. Amen. Especially money. Amen. Glory to God. So spend less, decrease debt, and so into the kingdom. Yes. If you take care of the kingdom needs, the kingdom will take care of your needs. Amen. Amen. If you take care of the kingdom's needs, the kingdom will take care of your needs. He says he will supply all of our needs, needs according to his riches and glory. By Christ Jesus. My God, my God. And it says this, uh, do God's work and God will work for you. Amen. This is just not a ploy to get your money. This is what I did. Listen, everything I preached, I did it before I preached it. Mm. Or I've done it while I'm preaching. Because mm -hmm. it, it works. Everybody say it works. It works. And I ain't talking about the stuff that <laughs> what they sell with the things and the wrap ups. <laughs> Do God's work and God will work for you. Amen. So being in the kingdom, many get it twisted. I'm saved, but is your money saved? That's Come on now. Uh, I'm saved, but is my money saved? Money saved. <laughs> Glory to God. We get it twisted. I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, but my money going straight to hell. Mm. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Y'all know that reflection. <laughs> I'm saved, but my business not saved. I'm just a social media guru. Mm. I want to look good on the net, mm. but my net worth ain't nothing. Come on now. I want to help y'all today. Yes, help us, Lord. My God. I want us to get into that rest because, listen, if we get into that rest, we ain't worried about nothing else. Amen. Oh, good. Amen. 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 Woo. Oh, my God. I felt that. Yes, God. So, like an alcoholic anonymous, <laughs> I'm Pastor Ruth, and my money is saved. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm Pastor Ruth, my money is saved. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. My money saved. So why is money so taboo? Mm. Because people's heart is jacked up. Yeah. People's heart is messed up when you talk about money because it makes them feel kind of crazy, especially a pastor who preaches about money and talks about money because people think they're trying to get your money when in all actuality, we want you blessed. Amen. Especially a small, a small church like us. Glory to God, because we can't help you with your bills. But we can tell you what to do for your bills so you can do right with your bills. Amen. You know, so we got to get our mindset changed so we're not worried about our bills so we can give to the church and then we can help somebody. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, help somebody. Help somebody. So then that's a slap in the face because the church supposed to help the needy in that's the right. community. Yeah. That's right. So how are we going to help if we ain't got nothing to help with? Change our minds, Lord. Yes, yes. As a shepherd after God's own heart, it burns when you can't do what you called to do. Come on now. Because everybody's yes, mind is messed up. Amen. Amen. So I yes. give everything I've got. Amen. 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 Why is money taboo? Because people's heart is messed up. In Amen. Matthew 6, 19 through 21, it says, Lay not up yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust corrupt. And where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust corrupt, where thieves do not break through nor steal, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. So, like I said last week, if we look at our banking account and see Starbucks, 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 you need to cut it out. Amen. I try to get Starbucks every eight days if I can. <laughs> it's a lot of money. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Where is the bulk of your money going? That shows you where your heart is. Uh, yes. So we say, Pastor, I love my church. But I look at your statements and I say, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> your heart is not hurt. Amen. Amen. Can, we, can we break free today? Amen. Amen. 
Ooh, I love my church. But if we pull up your bank account, you love Julie and Burke. Mm. <laughs> that just rhymes with church. That's it. Uh. We want to break free. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, listen, your pastor can't pray over something that you do to yourself. That's right. That's right. Pastor, I'm going through something. What, you know, what's going on? I ain't got no money, but... But you fresh though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God. Uh, my God, I'm covered with the blood of Jesus, but then your feet is covered with the bloody shoes. <laughs> I'm covering your head for a You got bloody shoes on. Listen, it's not your money messed up, it's what you put it at is messed That's up. That's right. You put too much in this and not too much in kingdom, so now you messed up. Because mm. yeah. money got you. Because money got you. Help it says the love of money. Uh -huh. Not money. Money answers all things. Uh -huh. But it's our perception and where we put it at messes up our hearts. So Amen. then we talk about money in church. I want me some red bottoms. You don't know I had to walk barefoot in the projects all my life. I deserve it. Uh -huh. I know you deserve it. Yeah. But you better crawl before you walk. Oh my God. You better before you step out. You yes, have your business in order. Amen. Oh, no. So Amen. this is what it says. So, so, so I believe this is for those who don't want to give nothing to God's house first. Oh, no. Amen. Then worry about your house, right? So when people's heart is messed up, they're like, oh, Pastor Tripp, he's talking about money. No, 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 no. We want to get money to you. That's the it. money that you got now, if you think about it differently, you can manage it differently. Amen. There's nothing wrong with nice things if your house is in order. Oh, Amen. Good. Glory to God. Glory to God. There's nothing wrong with it. Per se, I wouldn't just spend all that money for no shoes because I use it for the kingdom because my heart been 100. And I know when I give, it should be given back to me. Fresh Amen. down, shaking together. So, man, give it to my bosom, right? So, I know the difference between seed and sowing and time and harvest. And glory to God. Because this is key. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Sometimes we give, we try to look for the right now blessing. Yes. But it's seed, time, harvest. My God. My God. I pray this is helping you because we're going to finish today. So this is how my structure is at my home. God, family, then the church. I give God 100%. Family, 90%. Church, 10%. I'm just using those in percentages so it will be better for us to understand. Amen? Amen. I give God my all. So if he wants it, all my money, you know what? He can have it. Amen. Amen. Everybody can't say that. Amen. I believe that is a gift. I believe that is a gift. It truly is a gift. Because it takes for you to see God's hand work in that area uh -huh. for you to flow in that area. Come on. That's a gift of God. Glory to God. We can work our way to that, but that's a gift of God. That's an anointing that you, you, you really have to be ready to endure that. Glory to God. My God. And it's a, it'll bless you. Amen. But I give it all to him. It says give my family 90% so we will be blessed. Yes. Take care of home. Yes. I don't want no bills coming up doubled up. Amen. I don't like doubled up. Oh. My God, I don't like what is doubled up, Pastor. That's when you don't pay your current balance and they send you another one, they say your past due balance. Amen. I hate double ups. And a lot of us may have double up, double up, double ups. Uh, triple ups. Uh, so that's what you know what that's called? A mountain. Yes, yes it is. Uh, Be thou cast into the sea. Yes. Can we get free today? Get free. Let's get free. My God. So I, I don't like those. So I give church 10% of my time, glory to God, so the church can grow. Not saying that that's all you should give. You should just sow into the kingdom. Amen? Amen. So it can grow and the, the church can reign spawn, so do what it needs to do yeah. in whatever community it is. Glory to God. I thank God for the mega churches because they're doing the work that the small churches can't do. Come on. All right. But then it, it, that's where it, it messes up the uh, perception of others because they don't want to come to your church because you ain't got a lot of things. Come on now. That's Ooh. true. That's so true. A big church can do stuff that a small church can't big do. Uh -huh. And people want to go to the big church, and this is the key. They still don't give. Come on now. So it ain't really the people or the big church. It's the heart of the people. Amen. Because this is how churches grow. You be what you see ain't being done where you at. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Yes. Amen. Teach us. 
We ain't got this. We'll be that. Amen. <laughs> Come on. Transform into what? Ooh, transform uh -huh. into what you need to be. Amen. Uh, yes, yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. I know I'm boring you. I'm almost done. Come on. <laughs> so the church says, uh, church can grow. Not saying that we're not doing what we're supposed to do. So into the kingdom. But churches can raise its funds. Uh -huh. Go because greed will kill your seed. Yes, it will. Come on. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Greed will kill your seed. So when you hold your money, guess what? Something's going to come get that bread. Yes, it is. Uh -huh. Ooh, Jesus. Help us today. When you hold it, yeah. rust. Moth, Real's got thieves yeah. gonna come get that. Yes. So don't ever think you saving all your money. Uh huh. Because you don't want to give it to God. Mm. It's gonna be <laughs> something that's gonna pop up. That's right. That's not no warning. That's not nothing scary. That's just the truth. It is. Sure yeah. is. You gonna pay somebody some money. That's right. <laughs> You is. Amen. Amen. It's, 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 because green will kill your seed. Amen. Seeds are planted. No, seeds are to be planted, not stored up and wasted. Uh-huh. So sow your seed to receive a harvest. Amen. Uh -huh. Seeds are made to be planted. You don't just get a seed to just put it in a jar. That's right. That's right. These money seeds. Uh-huh. Look at the pretty money seeds. <laughs> <laughs> they so pretty. <laughs> It won't do nothing to you. So it's oh, the money seed. Ooh, look. I got a thousand money seeds. I'm looking for myself. Ooh, oh, I almost dropped my seed. <laughs> Pastor talking about a king of capital. Can't get mine today. Oh. oh no. My seed is. Where my seeds at? Pastor, I ain't got no seed. Did you sow it? <laughs> Come on, Pastor. He says he gives seed <laughs> to the sower. Yeah. So you wondering how we a small church and we ain't fell under yet. Listen to this. He gives seed to the sower. Yeah. I sow all my seed, I get more seed. I sow all my seed, I get more seed. I sow all my seed, I get more seed. I get more seed. He gives seed to the sower. Yes. And I get my debts paid so my credit grows. Yes. And I use my credit and sow my seed. Amen. Amen. I don't know if nobody teaching this. I've been in ministry 15 years. Pastor in six. My God, my God. My God. So seeds need to be planted, not stored up and wasted. So sow your seed to receive a harvest. I'm Amen. Amen. Uh, financial literacy. I want my church to go back to God. We all riding good. Come on the now. amount of money we make. Uh huh. We all riding good with the amount of money we make. Yes. You make two thousand a month, you should be blessed still. Amen. If you make it two thousand, your bill shouldn't be nineteen ninety nine. <laughs> Come on, Pastor. Uh, Amen. Amen. That's what's going on. We have too much debt. Yeah. Yes. No to debt. No to debt. No to debt. No to debt. No Financial to debt. literacy. It says the ability to read and write. Mmm. Knowledge that relates to a specific subject. The quality or state of being literate. Some of us don't know money, so we don't know how to handle money. Uh huh. We don't talk about money in church. We don't talk about sex in church. We don't talk about relationships in church. But people out there going through sex, money, and everything. Amen. But the church Amen. ain't giving you everything. We want to give you what we want to give you. And then you want to give us what you want to give us. Come on now. So it's a no win, no win. I want you free. Amen. I ain't too sick of going in circles. Yes, Lord. And trying to look for the perfect church. Yes, God. <laughs> you ain't got what I need, though. I'm going over here, but you still tore up in your heart. So you ain't right. getting nothing anyway. Come oh, on now. Nothing over there. Uh -oh, I ain't going there. What the word is saying? Listen. We come to break up fallow ground. Like, lady, we come to shake the city. Yes, yes. We don't want a broke church. Yes. And I ain't talking about the church finance. I'm talking about the people in the church. Come on now. you are the church. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Ain't nobody talking about money like this. Amen. They're not. Financial literacy is the ability to use the knowledge and skills to manage financial resources effectively for a lifetime of financial well-being. 
if we don't manage our money, how are we going to make it to the next month? Right. That's right. All right. That's right. All right. Oh my God, okay, I got $2,000. My bills is $1,500. Okay, all right. It, it got bubbled up because I didn't pay it last month because I wanted that. Okay, it got bubbled up because that happened and I didn't pay that. Okay, all right. Maybe next month if I get caught up, I won't have to go through that same thing because really all my bills is $750. Mm -hmm. So now I got 13 something and I really could use it the right way. No, I got 1250 and, and now I can do something uh, the right way and I get 2000 Maybe I sold my seed. Oh, that's 10%. Oh, 10 Praise God. I gave the church $200. Oh, that double. But I need to manage my money different. Yes. So now if I don't manage my money different, you know the first thing going to go? Your seed to your church. That's right. And now you know what? The church is like, uh, <laughs> speaking of money, yeah. well, we Jesus. need to think differently. Yeah. Financial fast. Pastor, we're talking about a financial fast, right? Don't do some things. Mm -hmm. I don't want your money. <laughs> Can I be real with you? Amen. I don't use your money. I use this for the kingdom of God. Amen. Right? Use it for the kingdom of God. I'm a good manager of not just my finances, but the churches as well. Amen. We want to go to the next level, glory to God, by every little dime we get. Amen. One offering per Sunday, we believe in God for. Yes, Lord. And he does miraculous things. Yes. But it can be more if our hearts weren't tied up in the world system. Right. Amen. Right. We could be mega with you. Financially, but we need to talk about financial literacy because if you're in debt, you can't get into your rest. Come on, my God, my God! I hope this is blessing you. It Amen. is. Amen. Hope this is blessing you. Amen. So, now, financial literacy. Glory to God. Talks about banks and other institutions. Glory to God. Applying for credit cards, credit checks, pay other credit balances without the proper knowledge of checks and balances, it is easy to get into financial trouble. In past generations, cash was used virtually for every purchase. Today, cash is rarely used. Some of us got debit cards, but we do not use Give a Five. I ain't got no cash, Pastor. We got Give a Five. Come on, help us today. You can download Give a Five on your phone, so even if you ain't church, you can still see it. Come on, that's right. Because the mission has to go on. Amen. God's mission, the gospel of Jesus Christ has to be preached. And I'm preaching this decently in order because if our minds are not changed with our finances, we can go through the same thing. Amen? That's right. Then it says, uh, online shopping has become the top choice for younger shoppers, mm -hmm. creating ample opportunities to use an overextended credit and all too easy to accumulate debt fast. Yes. Many of these consumers have very little understanding of finances, how credit works and potentially impact their financial well-being. Have you ever noticed when you didn't pay your Sprint boy bill it got on your credit? Yeah. Sprint it cuts you off for a dollar twenty six cents. Really? <laughs> wow. And it'll be on your credit and make your credit go down. Wow. When I learned about financial literacy, I said, you know what, I'll never be a broke another day of my life. Amen. Because I started to pay my bills on time, Me pay too. my stuff to zero balance. So if something do slow up, I can still catch up. That's right. Amen. If something do slip up, I can still catch up. Amen. We got a song by faith. Bills ain't been paid in a month, but we ain't tripping off this stuff. Because I know my, I ain't tripping off what happened within one month. Amen. Listen. Financial literacy. Yes. Financial credit, debt management, and the knowledge that is necessary to make financial responsibility or financial re responsible decisions and decisions that are integral to our everyday living. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Everyday living. Yes. Because if you look at some of your, if you look at your life as a a, a business, uh huh. You look from January to December, you see the high peaks of what you spent. Uh huh. We know December was high. It's Christmas. Oh, really? Yes. We know all the other stuff. So we got to think like, man, I'm not going to spend all my money in December. Let me save in January for December. Amen. Can I bless you? Let me bless save $50 Lord. a month so when December comes, I won't take all my seed because I want to go to the New Year with some money. Amen. Amen. 
I'm not telling you what to do with your money. I'm just telling you how to use it the right way. And I got this down. I got uh, five minutes. We can open up for questions about your money. Real quick. Anybody? Anybody got questions? About how you can change your financial situation? Go ahead. Okay, like with the credit cards, because yes. the, cre the credit cards will get you yes. once you get too comfortable. Yes. Okay, say you got credit cards and you got other bills. Yes. You know, wouldn't, wouldn't it be smart to just pay off all the credit cards and get rid of them? Like, okay, some people use their tech money to pay their rent up to do different stuff. But wouldn't it be smart to just pay all the credit cards off and eliminate all of them and then just have the rest of the bills? You gotta be smart because this is what they don't tell you. When you get a credit card, you should only supposed to spend thirty percent of that credit card. So when you spend more than that thirty percent, now your credit goes up. Uh, your credit score uh, it, it gets affected because your uh, credit spinning spinach has went up. So now that lowers your credit score. So it would be smart to pay that off to zero and use your credit cards for emergencies. So you're using for emergency, so now you can use that. You ain't tripping off what's going to go on. Now you got that money as your emergency instead of being backed on your credit. Because this is what happens. When that credit uh, balance is high, your credit stays low. Uh, okay. So as your credit stays low, now you're trying to go to another level. You can't because it says you need to pay down those credit cards. Right. So that would be a great thing to do and use that money as your financial emergency fund when you really need to do it. Car repairs, you ain't got no money, use your gas, and then pay that right off. If you have a small uh, amount that you need to pay off, that would be the best thing to do. So you can have something that you know you can pay. Okay. Instead of just having that big old balance on there and every month it reports to your creditors and now your credit goes down. Right. So that is, that's a good one. Pay that off. And they, what they call it is a snowball effect. Start off with your debts, pay those off, and then you can change your whole aspect of what you got going right. on. Because you need you need credit. That's right. Oh, you need it. Glory to God. I just got some work done on my truck and I use credit. Right? Emergencies. Yes. How am I? No, it's good. Oh, okay. But, but I, I got I asked for a reason. Okay, I'm 53 years old. Mm -hmm. And in my grandparents' generation, they owned their home for 150 something years old. Right. Um, kid, we have an entitled generation of kids coming up. Come on, come on. And as a person looking as a mother or or as a parent, um, we have more expenses for our 30 and 40 year old children. Yeah. Because not only because of society, um, a lot of our children have backgrounds now. Yes. Um, like you said, um, addictive behaviors. Yes. You know, all those things will keep you in debt. Come on now. Come on now. And so I was, I wanted to hear your honest opinion yes. as a young man. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest for a parent of our generation? Mm -hmm. 